It was mid-December 2016 when Dave Wilde, a long-time member and former chairman of the Derwent Valley Light Railway Society, asked me if I would take on the restoration of one of the original Derwent Valley Light Railway pump carts. Hi, my name's Alan Briggs and I'm a member of the Derwent Valley Light Railway Society and this is the story of how I restored one of the original Derwent Valley Light Railway pump carts. Here you can see the wood that survives um, and the pieces in the two bags at the uh, right hand side uh, are basically unrecognisable. Next we see the surviving metalwork um, starting on the right with the four wheels then the handle Next to that is what originally I thought might be the connecting rod, but uh, wasn't and um, doesn't actually have anything to do with the pump cart. Next to that is the crown wheel, complete with crankshaft, and then the two axles. Unfortunately, parts of the wheels had been um, left in soil and had actually rotted away. Luckily, um, Tony Simons took them to college and got the um, students to repair them. Both axles were also bent but luckily Tony got these straightened out. He also bought new bearings for the axles and turned the ends of the axles down to fit the new bearings. As well as all the original um, pieces of the pump cart we also received this partly built new chassis. So Dave Wilde and myself decided that we would lay it on the ground and then look at the original pieces and see if we could identify what they were and where they went in relationship to the chassis. Here we've identified two pieces which were originally one piece and was one of the main rails, the main rails which were on the side where the brake mechanism was fitted. Here you can see the two brake block hangers which held the brake blocks and here you can um, just see part of one of the original bearings for one of the axles and here you can just see the end of the axle and if you look across you'll see the axle underneath the framework. Now this is just the uh, same area at a different angle looking down on that and again you can see um, the two brake block hangers and then in the middle of that you can see um, the bracket which actually holds the, um, the, the foot pedal and then next to that you can see one of the original um, brake levers. Unfortunately um, only one of those levers survives so at some point we have to make a new one. Now this is the opposite side um, again just part of the opposite main rail with the bearing and this is the other part of the main rail um, again with the bearing. Here we identified to the two inner main rails, um, as you can see only half of those main rails exist um, but the halves that do contain the bearings which hold the uh, crankshaft and crown wheel and you can see there Dave Wilde is just uh, inspecting that. This is just another view of the crown wheel and crankshaft um, in its uh, bearings. Here we're looking down the length of the chassis and you can see that unfortunately there's a problem with the new chassis um, because the inner two main rails have actually been set too wide apart. Um, if you look at the original inner main rails which are supporting the crankshaft you can see that they're a lot closer 
Um, so this will have to be something um, that will need to be rectified. Again this is just a close up of that um, same piece. Another problem is that the crown wheel is actually fouling on the two um, cross pieces at either side. And so a quick check on the plan and a count up of the cross pieces. I noticed that there were six cross pieces on the new chassis. Whereas on the plan there are only five. So again this is something that will have to be rectified. Here I'm comparing the dimensions of the wood used to make the new chassis against the dimensions of the original wood and unfortunately it was quite a bit smaller. So Dave and I looked at the three issues we have just found and we decided that we would um, order new wood and I would start making the chassis from scratch. On Wednesday the 3rd of May 2017 I met Craig Benton, a new member and volunteer at the railway. Craig had volunteered to take the metalwork to someone he knew for sandblasting and would then take it back to his warehouse where he would paint it with red oxide and top coat of black. Mid afternoon on Wednesday the 17th of May I took delivery of the wood and immediately checked to make sure everything was as ordered, which it was. Work started in earnest on the 18th of May and here you can see the four main rails they've had their ends cut to um, make the handles and then they've all been rebated to accept the cross pieces. Here you can see them just test fitted together before bolting. Here the outer main rails have all been bolted together and the inner main rails have been placed with the crankshaft in position to ascertain their correct position before bolting. Here you can see the crown wheel and crankshaft in its bearings which are not uh, secured at this point. And here you can see that the axle and its bearings have been added um, along with the, crown, with the um, pinion wheel. And here you can see that turning the crown wheel actually turns the pinion wheel which in turn turns the axle. So this is the first time that the axle has actually been turned by the crown wheel in over 50 years. Here you can see that the um, main chassis is complete and the crown wheel and bearings have been fitted. Next I turned the chassis over so that I could work out the position of the drive axle and bearings and this is just another uh, view. Once the drive axle was fitted I could measure from that to set the position of the other axle. Here the cart has um, been turned the right way up and the wheels fitted. Next I made one side of the gallows frame and here you can see it clamped onto the chassis um, so that I could mark the correct angle for where it fits to the chassis. Here the other side of the gallows frame has been made and it's all clamped together and test fitted. Here we see the gallows frame all screwed together and screwed to the chassis. Here I've placed the handle in its uh, bearings um, on top of the gallows frame ready to work out po the position of the um, tie rods. Here you can see the vertical and the diagonal tie rods fitted. These um, give strength to the gallows frame. Whilst in at the railway today um, Dave gave me a letter and this letter is actually a letter from a Mr. Brian Slater who was the actual guy who found the pump cart um, all those years ago and this letter actually tells us in more detail of the story of the pump cart from when he found it 
Now, the letter is written to a, a Nick Bealby, who is a member of the Derwent Valley Light Railway Society, and is also a member of the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, and, um, and I believe has some uh, job with those. Um, so I'll read the letter out because it gives a lot more information regarding the pump cart. And this is actually dated the 23rd of November 2012. Dear Nick, further to our quick natter the other week at the railway station, the remains of the DVLR pump trolley has been mouldering away down my garden for too many years now. I spotted the remains dumped in the cutting side at, the, at either Dunnington or Elvington in about 1970. It could have been from one of the Joe M trains running then, and I went back a few days later to look closer. It had been abandoned, presumably by the Peeway gang, and in subsequent burning off of the dead grass, most of the wooden superstructure has succumbed and was about two thirds burnt away. However, the metal parts were relatively untouched. I decided to approach John Acklam, the general manager, about buying it. He was quite happy to let it go and we agreed a price, £10, if I remember rightly. I might still have the receipt made out in Leithorpe office, somewhere in my chaotic filing system. I suppose my working at York HQ helped a bit as regards my bona fides. On getting the bits home, the heaviest are the wheels and axles, a hundred weight each, and on both and on further full inspection, I noticed one of the wheel bearings had given way, no doubt the reason for its final abandonment. I purchased some ash spars with the intention of rebuilding it for possible use running on the Worth Valley. I was a regular volunteer there then. However, putting the proposal to Richard Greenwood, the main operating guy then, he said that it would be totally impractical on the steepish gradients on the line, as the braking system as it stands is rudimentary in the extreme. I still have the ash spars somewhere buried in my garden shed. I am quite willing to let the DVLR have it, and any member of the current committee, or whoever you decide, is very welcome to come and have a look at the bits, now in my garage. If I remember rightly, you mentioned that two volunteers are involved with the Wickham trolley and that they could be interested. Sunday afternoons are best for me, perhaps in the next few weeks. Give me a ring, etc, etc. Brian Slater. So this is quite good information actually and um, answers quite a number of questions that I've had because I was wondering why so little of the... Um, original woodwork exists and according to this we can see that it was burnt away in the burning off process of the grasses in the hedges. Um, it also shows us that it's um, quite a lot older than, than um, I thought from the time when they bought when they got it because this is now um, 2012 so that's um, sorry not 2012 this was found in 1970, so that's um, 40, 47, 48 years. Um, and we know it was, it was found either near Dunnington or Elvington. So the chances are it was one of the pump carts that was based at one of those stations. And we also know that he paid £10 for it. So this is... Um, good information in the in the provenance of the pump cart so I'm very happy to have this and um, I've already given Jonathan Stockwell a copy of this to go in the archives so this is uh, this is good stuff this is what is left of the original connecting rod which as you can see has severe corrosion this is one of the ends and as you can see 
where the nut should be is just pointed metal. Here you can see where I've used a hacksaw to cut through the original U-bolts to release the um, brass bushes which can be reused. Before making a new connecting rod out of metal um, I made one out of wood to ascertain the correct length and here you can see me um, testing it. So this is probably the first time the wheels have turned by use of the handle in over 50 years. This is one of the ends of the new connecting rod made out of 5mm flat bar. Two of these were required. The connecting rod is made out of 20mm round bar and here you can see I've made a jig to hold the um, ends in the correct position to the round bar for welding. Here you can see the finished connecting rod before painting. And here the connecting rod has been painted and then fitted between the handle and the crankshaft. Next I started work on the brake mechanism. Here you can see some 20mm square bar with a 13mm hole drilled in it and next to that a 20mm round bar which I took to Dave Wilde who put it in his lathe and turned the end down to just short of 13mm so that it would fit in the 13mm hole you see there. So a big thank you to Dave for his help with that. Here you can see I have now welded the round bar into the square bar and this makes up the bottom part of the brake pedal. This is the top part of the brake pedal which is made from 5mm flat bar. Here you see at the bottom the new brake lever made out of 5mm flat bar with the original one above it. Both of them have the hinge section which are newly made out of 5mm flat bar. Here you can see the original brake block hangers which are in reasonable condition apart from the uh, ends at the top there which actually go through the chassis where they have um, suffered some considerable corrosion. Talking this problem through with Ken Atkinson, one of our uh, engineers, he suggested and supplied some large bolts of the similar diameter and some large washers suggesting that he could weld the washers in place to, um, to make up new ones. Unfortunately when I needed them welding uh, Ken had been uh, taken poorly and was in a hospital but luckily um, when I needed them welding Andy Richards was in doing some welding on another job and uh, so he welded the washers on for me to make the new uh, brake block hangers. So a big thank you there to both Ken and Andy for playing their part in this um, restoration procedure. Here you can see the test fitting of the brake assembly um, with the spring on top um, held by a clamp to ascertain the final length of the 20 millimeter square bar. Here you can see that the square bar has now been cut to length. It was then drilled and tapped to take an M6 bolt and then the round pedal on top was drilled and countersunk and then that is held on by a countersunk 6 millimeter bolt. Now as you can see so far the pump cart is built as far as it can go apart from the floorboards. So at this point I stripped all the metalwork off the woodwork so that I could paint it. And this is what happens next. Here the framework has been given two coats of undercoat before a top coat of red. The next job before I started to fit the metalwork was to fit the four short pieces of floorboard as you see here. The reason these were done next were because 
they needed to be bolted through the floorboards and through the actual frame so it was a lot easier to turn the frame on its side in order to do this. Once this was done I started to refit the metalwork as can be seen. The handles were made from 2 inch by 2 inch ash um, and were turned down on the lathe to fit into the metal handle as can be seen here. Here you can see the floorboards in the process of being fitted. And here we have the finished pump cart which is now ready to go to the railway to be tested on the lines. This is just a side view. And here we have a close up of the sign on the side of the uh, bottom of the gallows frame. On the 10th of August Craig brought a trailer and with the help of Ken, Dave, Craig and Paul Briggs we loaded the pump cart ready to go to the railway for testing. Here we see the completed pump cart returning to the railway for the first time in many years. From left to right we see Craig Benton, Ken Lees, Dave Wilde and Paul Briggs unloading the pump cart from the trolley in preparation for putting it on the track for the first time. And here we see the pump cart finally back on the track for the first time in almost 50 years. Here we see Ken and Dave enjoying themselves on one of the uh, very first test runs. After testing was finished we load the pump cart back onto the trailer where we took it across to Craig's warehouse uh, where it's going to be kept until the unveiling. On the 27th of August 2017 the Derwent Valley Light Railway Society celebrate 25 years since the first heritage trains ran at Merton Park. The highlight of the day being the unveiling of the fully restored pump cat. Yeah, we need Jonathan now. What I think. It, it, it won't. Oh, right, yeah. Alice. Yeah. Yeah. Alice, but yeah. But it won't yeah. look the same because yeah. it's newer. With it, all new stuff, it didn't same as the old Oh, well, stuff, well no. don't worry about that. It found it, well, it's better still. Than it ever did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The wheels will look as if it was I'll stand at one corner, you'll uh, stand at another corner. I'd like to introduce you to our archivist. What's your name again, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Stockwell. Jonathan has done a marvellous job on being an archivist on our railway. Uh, you'll see a publication of his book up in the station. It's a very interesting book. So I'll just let Jonathan just uh, say a few words to our special guests who have come here today. Jonathan. Thank you very much, Dave. For my sins, I've been put in at the deep end. So this, oh, this, uh, come come up, stand down here, this few words are, are done very, fairly quickly. We're here today to celebrate 25 years of the first passenger train under preservation at, at Merton. This happened on the 26th of August, yeah. 1992. Yeah and it was treated as the first open day and they only ran trains on the 26th of August 1992. Fast track to Easter 93 saw trains run on Sundays and Bank Holiday Mondays and because we're a greedy society we're not only celebrating today for the first passenger train but we're also going to have a small celebration at Easter next year to celebrate 25 years of <laughs> proper running services. Uh, 
Uh, Dave's already welcomed our special guest, Arthur Richmond. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> got a fan. I see you've got your fan club with you, Arthur. <laughs> and Ken and Lavinia Nelson. Firstly, Arthur. Just a bit about Arthur. All good, I hasten to add. Arthur joined the DVLR in 1942 as a plate layer based at Skipwith. In 1944, he accepted his call-up papers and was posted to India, where I understand he worked on the permanent way over there. He certainly had a Bobby's job. He returned to the DVLR in 1949, again working on the permanent way, and he left shortly afterwards to join the then new British Railways, again working on the permanent way, a job he kept until his retirement. On a number of occasions, Arthur has very kindly let me interview him. And in fact, after the first interview, we needed a second interview because I was too busy eating cake. <laughs> and you can't do an interview when you're eating cake. <clears throat> Secondly, Ken and Lavinia. <coughs> Ken's grandfather was porter in charge at Skipwith Station. Lavinia grew up for much of a life at Skipwith Station. Ken spent many happy school holidays at Skipwith Station and the DVLR was to become his train set. After the only train of the day, Ken would lift the pump trolley onto the main line and trundle up and down on the line. He basically had full control of the track at Skipwith. The trolley was also used to transport family members between Blackwood Crossing and Skipwith, where members of the family would travel from either Leeds or Skipwith, Leeds or Skipwith, Leeds or Selby, get off the bus at Blackwood Crossing, where the pump trolley was there, and the trundle back up to the station. Ken and his mum have shared many happy memories with me on a number of occasions, and have also let me delve into, into their wonderful photographic album. Many feature the Derwent Valley at Skipwith, and they were most supportive in my joint effort to produce the book Rails Along the Derwent. Copies are available in the station shop and the My Share passes to the DVLR Shed Fund. There's also some storyboards in the station depicting the history of the railway, and you'll be glad to know that that's the end of my speech. <laughs> Underneath here, I have absolutely no idea what it is, but I'm sure Ken Briggs, our member... Oh. Alan. Alan Briggs. Why did I... The reason why I said Ken Briggs is because Ken Briggs was a, a guy in Europe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, Alan, I do apologise. I'll let you on. Hello. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, I'm not going to spend as long talking as Jonathan. <laughs> All I will tell you is that... Brian Slater, 47 years ago, yeah. found the remains of this pump cart yeah. in the hedge at the side of the original railway. And the wheelbarrow there shows you yeah. the wood that was left, because most of it was burnt away when the grass was, was burnt down. So what is, what's under here is new wood. Oh, wow. I think you can understand why. <laughs> most of the metalwork is original. Um, and so, David, would you like to give me a hand? Oh, I've forgotten about me. Yeah, you've got on that side. Have you said enough about me? Yes, I've said enough. Well, I'm going to tell you some more about me. <laughs> because three years, three years ago, I was approached by, um, by this gentleman, Brian, and uh, he said to me, I've got a pump trolley. He says, would you like it? I thought, oh, great. <laughs> so I went, I went down to his house, yeah. and I said to him, uh, yeah. where is it? He said, oh, it's at the bottom of the garden. Oh. Well, I couldn't find it. It was like looking in that hedge. <laughs> and when I pulled all the stuff about, there was this rotten-looking piece of machine. Damn. So uh, anyway, he said, well, it's yours if you want it. So it was, it was stored here for some years, for about three years, and then uh, Alan came along as a member last year, and he said, I'd love to do that up. I said, would you really? He says, yeah. He says, go and do it. I said, yeah. So he did it, in, he built it in three months with the help of uh, 
Craig, where's Craig? Craig helped us with the, uh, the machinery, with the ironwork, cleaning it up and painting it. So it's been a little bit of a team effort, but basically Alan's done the, the, well, 95% of the work. So without, uh, without any more hesitation, shall we take it off? Yeah. Do you all want to see it? Yeah! yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Ken said he used to lift it onto the track. Yeah. Well, I can't believe it. You're alright. Where's your head? Where's your head? I know. I want to get lost, Dad. You didn't go this year. That's good, Al. You like it, now there's a, there's a tale that, uh, that Arthur just told me, says one of the staff that were going uh, sit with you. on the trolley one night, this chap came with you and put the pipe in his hand and put the pipe in his hand and put it in his pocket but with the trap. You like it? The trap. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay, can I just have you at the side, please? Well, you? the only colour picture we've got yeah. is red and black. That's, that's why we painted it, yeah? That's <laughs> 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 She's a remarkable lady and her mother's still alive. She's in my show. Well, I think you're sprightlier than your son is. And we didn't see him climbing up on it. No, he's not. I still do as I'm told. <laughs> you, can, you can stand on if you want to stand on for your photograph. Yeah. Can I get on it? Yeah, as long as you care. I have been on here since I was about 10. Here we go. Right, then. Oh, well done, bro. Look at the camera. Alan. Also known as Ken. All we need now, all, all we need now, Arthur, all we need now is the other bogey, some sleepers and some packing tools and we're away and get some... You can lay us another half a mile of track. <laughs> track down, mate. Get that on the track. And another one. We only want Elrond, lads. I'll be there for that. He'll have to put it on after the lecture. He can't hear you. He's deafer than you. Yeah. 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 Ye
Imagine, imagine on a Sunday morning you pack a picnic basket yeah. and the old ones would sit with their feet over the end and my Uncle Dick and my Uncle Eric and my dad and me I'd be at that side because there was a little handle there which is missing and I would be the brake man and we'd set off down the track on the Sunday morning and a nice place where there was either blackberries or primroses and we'd have a picnic and what have you and then we'd go back again and that was our day out and my dad one, one weekend my dad's on there and he's pumping away and my mother sat on the end and she's let a great shriek out and what's up and my dad's trousers were just hanging on the edge and the wheel was wearing a hole in his turn. <laughs> <laughs> she went bloody ballistic. <laughs> oh my God. I thought she was going to kill him. And <laughs> <laughs> your trousers. Yeah, but it was great fun. Yeah. If you get Jonathan's book, in his book he tells you about the back end of the war while this gentleman, Arthur, was there fighting for his king and country and looking after us all. We got the Italian prisoners and we brought them in to work as plate layers on the railway. Now I was about four years old by this time. And these guys were they were they were soldiers, they were they were they were artisans, a lot very clever men a lot of them. And they made me things like marble games and a little trolley and a sack cart and all stuff like that. But they used to go down the track and uh, Ned was the ganger in charge of them and they used to take me with them. And one of them <laughs> used to come every Sunday to our house for his dinner. I love that. So they take me with them. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. And even as they grew up and they'd gone back to Italy, they used to write to me. So we, we go down and we'd take a few old sleepers out and put them in. So they taught me at that age how, how to drag a sleeper out and then put another one in and then used to drill the bolts through and then as you tighten the bolts you pick the sleeper in the chair up to the track yeah. and then get the shovels and pack the ashes underneath and then you get the jack out and then you could get and look down the track and you'd jack it up a bit and then pack them under and we used to do that yeah so I, this is this is fond memories we used to go out on one of these and, and push in a little trolley with us with the sleepers on well, shall we have a demonstration yeah that's it yeah. It's uh, it's amazing, it really is. It's fantastic. We have to have a break, man. We have to have something on the street. Is it like it, like it oh, telling them that? Well, yeah, this took us from Cliff Common to Weldrill. Yeah. yeah. Mind you, yeah. it's gone to Weldrill. Yeah. 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 If you, yeah, if you yeah, jump down, yeah. then, Ken. Yeah. 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 He'll have had a lot of heavy youth in today. Yeah. 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 Well, give it a look.